Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton. Welcome to the beautiful woods of Western Pennsylvania. Right now I'm standing next to a tree that many people know quite well. This is black walnut. Black walnut is an incredibly fascinating tree. It provides food and medicine for humans and for wildlife. Its wood is economically valuable and its phytochemistry is the subject of much controversy. Perhaps you've heard something about black walnut and its effects on other plants. Black walnut is said to be toxic to plants and this toxicity is attributed to a chemical compound that the tree releases into the soil. This claim is all over the internet. A quick online search will easily give you information on this topic, maybe scare you a bit. And if you talk to ecologists and gardeners, it seems you will hear some version of this claim that black walnut, through the release of a specific chemical compound, kills or at least inhibits the growth of plants. When I first learned about black walnuts many years ago, I remember learning actually about the toxic effects of black walnut on fish and how the husks of the nuts could be used as fish poison. But I also remember learning about the toxic effects on plants. I heard that tomatoes and certain garden vegetables wouldn't grow near black walnut I heard that certain trees wouldn't grow near black walnut. I even heard no plant could exist under black walnut. Sounds extreme, but these are all things people told me, and I didn't question any of this at first because I didn't really know anything about the tree. But as the years passed, and as I started walking around and spending more time in different ecosystems, and as I dug more deeply into the scientific literature and read reports from people who knew a thing or two about black walnut, the more I realized the story I had been told was much more complicated than I had thought. Today we are going to talk about this controversy and try to get some answers. Does black walnut inhibit the growth of plants? If so, are all plants affected or just some? What's the mechanism behind this purported toxicity? And is it really a bad idea to grow our garden plants near a black walnut tree? Well, let's start with the biological phenomenon at the root of this issue. It's called allelopathy, and although the definition is broad, it usually describes a situation where one organism affects the growth, development, or reproduction of other organisms through the release of certain chemicals. These chemicals are called allelochemicals, and when most people talk about allelopathy, they talk about the harm these chemicals cause to nearby organisms, typically plants. Now, when you read anything about black walnut and its toxic effects on plants, you almost always hear that a compound in black walnut known as juglone is the culprit. But actually, while some juglone is found within the tree, a precursor known as hydrojuglone is found in higher concentrations within the tree, specifically in the roots, leaves, and fruits. Hydrojuglone is oxidized into juglone typically after being released into the soil or exposed to air due to tissue damage, leaf drop, or root leakage. Now, if black walnut is indeed allelopathic and it releases a chemical into the soil that kills or inhibits the growth of other plants, it's easy to imagine that nothing will grow near a black walnut tree. And as I said, I've heard this belief before. I've heard people say they didn't think anything could grow near a black walnut tree because of its allelopathic effects. But all we have to do is spend some time in an ecosystem where black walnut grows to see for ourselves just how false this belief really is. Life thrives under and around black walnut trees. This particular ecosystem is a former homestead, and quite a few black walnuts exist here, alongside black locust, northern red oak, shingle oak, black cherry, red maple, hawthorn, slippery elm, red pine, oriental bittersweet, Japanese barberry, multiflora rose, wing stem, white snake root, false nettle, garlic mustard, and Japanese stilt grass. Over in this floodplain ecosystem, black walnut grows next to black maple, sycamore, box elder, white ash, American elm, water leaf, wood nettle, bloodroot, and Japanese knotweed. This other ecosystem is a forested ecosystem underlain by carbonate rock, where old, large black walnut trees grow. Probably the largest I've ever seen. And they're growing alongside box elder, northern red oak, sugar maple, white ash, pagoda dogwood, hop hornbeam, Virginia creeper, and poison ivy. And of course, in park and yard settings like this one right here, you will commonly see lush grass blanketing the ground underneath black walnut and sometimes dense plant growth right at the base of the trunk. So what's going on here? If black walnut is allelopathic, as so many people claim it is, 
Why is it the case that so many examples exist where black walnut grows alongside not just one or two plants, but an incredible variety of plants? Well, we can walk into a floodplain or a rich mesic hillside or a former homestead and see with our own eyes that black walnut coexists with numerous plants, seemingly debunking the allelopathic theory. But scientific studies and people's interpretations of these studies still tell us that black walnut is indeed allelopathic. And quite a few anecdotal reports tell us the same thing. Now, the purported toxic effects of walnut trees on other plants have been noted for at least a few millennia. But it wasn't until the 19th century, and especially the 20th century, when reports and publications really started documenting the supposed toxic effects of North America's black walnut tree. In the late 1800s, reports documented how black walnut killed apple trees in orchards. More evidence emerged in the 1920s when experiments showed that tomato plants failed to grow properly when grown in water and soil media supplemented with black walnut bark. Field observations in the 1920s also showed that tomato plants and alfalfa suffered when growing near black walnut trees. But not all studies supported these findings. Some studies actually found no evidence that black walnut inhibited the growth of plants. A three-year greenhouse study reported no significant difference in the growth of tomato plants, alfalfa, and apple trees when grown with walnut trees or roots in containers. Even when exposed to a solution made from ground black walnut roots, tomato plants did not show any signs of toxicity. A later study reported no significant difference in understory vegetation between black walnut and other tree species in three of four stands studied, despite detectable juglone concentrations in the soil beneath the black walnut trees. And another study found that a bacterium isolated from soil beneath black walnut trees could metabolize juglone and convert it into less toxic compounds. Some researchers used this finding as evidence against black walnut allelopathy and concluded that juglone is unlikely to be an important inhibitory compound under natural conditions. And this is a key point worth highlighting. A lot of the studies describing black walnut toxicity were conducted in laboratory settings, often using soilless media and sometimes even using isolated plant extracts. These conditions don't actually exist on a rich mesic hillside or on a real floodplain where black walnut often grows. And researchers know this. The lack of convincing results demonstrating allelopathy with black walnut in a natural setting is not surprising. Allelopathy is unlikely to be obvious in natural environments where selection over millions of years has already filtered those species intolerant of the toxins concerned. Conversely, allelopathy is likely to be most dramatic in environments, especially those artificially created such as agriculture, where species with little coevolutionary history are brought together. So it may be the case that black walnut is allelopathic, but that the wild plants currently thriving under and around black walnut tolerate juglone. But based on my observations, I've found many examples of plants and trees that are supposed to be intolerant of juglone growing rather closely to black walnut. Many people claim that domestic apples are intolerant of juglone, but I've found quite a few domestic apple trees growing alongside black walnut. People have said the same thing about red pine, but I've found healthy red pine growing alongside black walnut. Reports indicate that white pine is killed or inhibited by black walnut, but I've seen lots of white pine growing next to black walnut. I've even heard that only native plants will grow next to black walnut, which is interesting because I've seen many non-native plants like multiflora rose, oriental bittersweet, Japanese knotweed, and garlic mustard growing directly under or next to black walnut. But more often than not, when you hear anything about black walnut and allelopathy, you're probably hearing something about its toxic effects on cultivated garden plants, particularly nightshades like tomatoes. In addition to scientific studies, many anecdotal reports suggest that tomatoes and other nightshades wilt or fail to grow properly when they're planted near a black walnut tree. But for every report you hear of someone's unsuccessful garden near a black walnut tree, you'll hear another report of someone's successful garden near a black walnut tree. So it's not always true that gardening is impossible or even very difficult when a black walnut is growing nearby. Many factors are obviously involved in the growing 
of a successful garden. Factors like water and nutrients and sunlight. A single black walnut tree can capture a decent amount of sunlight with its crown and its deep extensive root system can capture a lot of water and nutrients. These are all resources that nearby plants require for their growth. And if these resources aren't available, well, you don't need me to tell you this, but plants suffer. So perhaps it's the case that garden plants struggle, not necessarily or entirely because of juglone toxicity when a black walnut tree is growing nearby, but because resources like water and nutrients and sunlight aren't as readily available. But who really knows for sure? The issue surrounding black walnut and its toxic effects on plants is complicated. Nothing about this is simple, which is why when people tell you, my tomato plants or apple trees died from juglone poisoning, it's not a bad idea to wonder if that's really true. We don't even know for sure that juglone acts alone in its purported ability to affect other plants. Juglone is perhaps the most well-studied allelopathic chemical derived from black walnut, but other chemicals might be allelopathic too, including phenolic acids, flavonoids, amines, alkaloids, and terpenes, all of which are found in black walnut. Even if all these chemicals did work in conjunction to affect the growth of other plants, it is almost impossible to demonstrate that allelopathy is solely responsible for such an observed pattern in the field. Despite the contradictory results in the scientific literature, and despite the conflicting anecdotal reports from first-hand observations, researchers still believe that there is certainly too much evidence to conclude that walnut has no chemical effect on neighboring plants. However, it certainly remains for more and better work to be done. I'm a huge fan of black walnut. I love exploring ecosystems where black walnut grows. I love many of the other plants that grow around black walnut, including butternut, hackberry, white ash, and pawpaw. I love learning new information about black walnut. But I think the issue surrounding its allelopathic effects on other plants is a bit overstated. If you are interested in reading more about this issue, I encourage you to read a great publication written by Linda Chalker Scott, where she lists a few tips to help you successfully garden near black walnut trees. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you want to support this channel, please subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. Head on over to learnyourland.com. Sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch and check out my online courses on ecology, tree identification, and mushroom foraging. Thanks again for watching. I will see you on the next video.